Now exercise 25, a uh, survey of 250 households showed that 91 of them owned at least one snow uh, blower. Uh, find a point estimate for P. P is the population proportion of uh, accident that involved faulty equipment. So a survey of 700, or I'm reading the other one, 24. A survey of 700 non-fatal accidents showed that 143 involved faulty equipment. Find a point estimate for P, the population proportion of accident that involved faulty equipment. So in order to estimate P, we use the sample proportion. And the sample proportion is by definition, X over N. N is the sample size. And X is, they call it the number of successes, like the, the number of equipment that involved uh, faulty equipment, which is number of accidents, which is 143. So the answer will be 143 divided by 700. And just divide 143 by 700. Zero point two zero four. For example, if I have 30 students in the class and I ask how many of you eat breakfast before you come to school, and let's say seven, they say they eat breakfast. So if I want to find an, est an estimate of the proportion of students at the college who eat breakfast before they come to school, I can do seven over 30. It's exactly the same thing. Number 25, a survey of 255 uh, households showed 91 owned at least one snowblower. He wants a point estimate for P, so that would be P hat, which is X over N again, same question, 91 divided by 250. And the answer, if you divide 91 by uh, 250, what would you guys uh, get? That is 91 divided by 250, 0 0.364. Uh, 26, when 440 junior college students were surveyed, 200 said that they have a passport. Uh, construct a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of junior college students that have a passport. Okay, when it is a confidence interval for a proportion, we use this interval built in on the calculator. It's called one prop Z interval. And you need to provide three values in order to execute this uh, feature here. You need uh, the confidence level, which is here, what, 95%. And we need the sample size, which is 440. And we need the number of successes, which is 200. That's all you need. And let me show you how to do this. You go to stat, tests. And then you keep scrolling down until you see proportion Z interval. So X is 200, N is 440, and confidence level is 95, and then hit calculate, and that's the interval. Here is how you write the interval down. P, that's a proportion, 0 0.408 and 0 0.501. Now, if I ask you to interpret this interval in words, you say, with 95% confidence, we can say that the true proportion of junior college students that have a passport is between 40.8% and 50.1%. Next question. An article, a Florida newspaper reported on the topics of teenagers most want to discuss with their parents. The finding the results of the poll showed that 46% would like more discussion about the family financial situation. 37% would like to talk about school and 30% would like to talk about religion. These and other percentages were based on national sampling of 546. So the sample size is 546. Estimate the proportion of all teenagers who want more family discussion about school, and we want 95% confidence interval. In other words, he wants you to construct a 95% confidence. So we need NX and the confidence level. This is the confidence level, so we still need X. Well, he didn't give me X explicitly, but he says 37% would like to talk about school. 
we know guys that p hat is x over n if i try to solve for x using some algebra here so x will be p hat times n so actually x will be p hat which is 0 0.37 he wants a confidence interval about students who would like to talk about school so it's 37 percent times the sample size which is 546 let's see what would that be 0 0.37 times 546 202.02 .02. but remember x is a whole number is a number of successes so it can't be decimal so when you put it into the calculator it just put 202 and let's show you if you if you put 202.02 .02, the calculator will not work so you go stat tests proportion z interval see i'm going to put 200.02 show you what's going to happen n is 546 and the confidence level is 95. see it's error so we go back fix 200 and then that's going to work now so here's the proportion p and as you can read it here 0 0.3259 and 0 0.4067 with 95 percent confidence we can say that the true proportion of students who want to discuss uh, who want to talk about school with their parents is about between 32.59 percent and 40.67 percent 28. a pollster wishes to estimate the number of left-handed scientists how large a sample is needed so he wants the sample size there is a formula for the sample size which i will provide uh, in order to be 95 percent confident that the sample proportion will not differ from the true proportion by no more than six percent the difference between the sample proportion and true proportion is called the margin of error. So E is 6%. A previous study indicates that the proportion of left-handed students is 90%. So I'm going to put the formula here and show you how we, uh, uh, we can use uh, this formula. All right. So let's continue here. There's the formula. You don't need to memorize this uh, formula. Uh, it will be provided to you. Okay. E, we know is 0 0.06. Z is the critical value for the confidence interval. And here's how we find the critical value for any confidence level. He gave us a 95% confidence. Here's what you do, guys. You take 100% minus 95%, which is 5%, divided by 2. You get 2.5%. And then go to inverse norm to find the critical value. Put 2.5% as a decimal and put comma 0, comma 1. And if I do this, I should get negative 1.96. Second, distribute inverse norm 0 0.025, 0 0.01, and here you go. Now, do you use a negative sign? You don't have to because this is going to be squared here. So just use 1.96. So N would be you put 1.96 here, you put 0 0.06 there, and square it. Now, what is P hat and Q hat? Look what he says here. He says the previous study indicated that the proportion of left-handed scientists is 9%. So he gives us P hat, which is 9%, 0 0.09. And Q hat is a probability of failure. So if 90% is yes, 91% is no. So you just put 0 0.91 here. And then you do the math. 0 0.09 times 0 0.91 times open parentheses. Uh, 1.96 divided by 0 0.06. Close it, square it, and you get 87.39. That's a sample size. You will always have to round up. So it should be 88 or more. Always round up. Even if you get 87.1, make it 88. 
Now, what about if he does in a previous study indicates that the proportion of left-handed signs is 0.9%, he doesn't give us this statement. What do I do with the P hat and Q hat? I still use 1.96 for Z, I still use 0.06. But if he doesn't give you an estimate for P hat and Q hat, use 0.5 for P hat and 0.5 for Q hat. Okay. Find the critical value that corresponds to 95% confidence and N is 16. As you can see guys right here, if you go second and variables, inverse T will allow you to find the critical value for that confidence level for T distribution. Here's how you do it. You go to inverse T, you do the same thing as we did before, 100% minus 95%, which is 5%, divided by 2, which is 2.5%. Now go to inverse T and enter 0 0.025 and enter the degrees of freedom. Let me show you. It says the area, which is 0 0.05, degrees of freedom with sample size minus 1 which is 15, 16 minus one is 15, and it's 2.131. Again, you, you, uh, you don't have to use the negative value, just use the positive one. Uh, 30, suppose a 90% confidence interval for mean turns out to be 1,100. If this interval was based on a sample of size 25, what assumption are necessary for this interval to be valid? You have to remember, guys, if the population is not bell-shaped, the sample size has to be 30 or more. Since he gave us a size of less than 30, then the population must be bell-shaped, normally distributed. And that's the answer. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean. Now we're not doing population proportion, population mean. Assume that the population has normal distribution. A sample of 20 part time, so N is 20. Uh, has the manual uh, annual earnings of 3,120 with a standard deviation as 677. Unless if he says a population standard deviation, it is always S, guys. Now, why this is very important to distinguish between S and Sigma. If he gives you S and you want to do the intervals for the mean confidence interval, notice here, when you go to do it, you're going to be hit by two intervals. Is it a Z interval or T interval? If he gives you S, it's a T interval. If he gives you population standard deviation, it's a Z interval. Most of the time, it is a T interval. So we're going to go to T. Okay, X bar 3,120. S is 677. N, how much? N is 20. And the confidence level, what does he want? 95%. And now here's the mean. He says round to the nearest dollar. So the mean will be, I'm just going to copy this 2,803 and 3,437. To interpret this interval, you guys can say, with 95% confidence, we can say that the true mean salary of part-time workers is between $2,803 and $30,437. 32, construct a 99% confidence interval population mean. Assume population has normal distributed uh, distribution. N is 19, has a mean of 22.4. With a standard deviation, didn't say population standard deviation, so it's S, 3.8. Okay, and the confidence level is 99. That's all you need to use a calculator. So it's a T interval, again. And that is, it was a T interval here. So you go to stat, tests, T interval. X bar is 22.4, S is 3.8, N is 19, confidence level, calculate. So here's the mean, 19.89 and 24.91. 
to interpret this interval. You say with 99% confidence, we can say that the true mean age is between 19.89 years and 24.91. 33, the grade point average of 10 randomly selected junior college students are listed below. Assume that the grade point average are normally distributed. Find a 98% confidence interval. He gives you raw data, guys. So this is what you have to do. You have to put the data into a list. And I've done that already. It's already in L1. And then it is a T interval since he didn't mention population standard deviation. Okay, now we have to select data. My list is in L1. Don't touch the frequency. Leave it always uh, well at one, and that's 98. And here's the mean. 1.55 and 3.53. Interpretation. With 98% confidence, you can say that the true mean GPA average is between 1.55 and 3.53. 34. In a random, so that's T interval again. It's very important interval. In a random sample of 60 dog owners, so N is 60, uh, enrolled for obedience training, it was determined that the mean amount spent per owner was 109.33 per class. Now, okay, pay attention to this. Assuming that the population standard deviation of the amount spent is $12. So now he gives us sigma, not S. He says population standard deviation. Here is the hint right here. So you cannot use T interval. You must use what? Z interval. Okay. Uh, he wants a 95% confidence interval. So you just go to stat. Z interval. That's the time where we use Z. And see, it's prompting you. You have to go to stats. Sigma is 12. X bar is 109.33. N is 60 dogs. Confidence level he wants 95. 95 is very popular confidence level. So here's the mean. 106.29. And 112.37. And you say with 95% confidence, we can see that true cost of obedi obedience training is between $106.29 and $112.37. And 35, the last question of the review a doctor at a local hospital is, is interested in estimating the birth weight of infants. How large a sample N? He wants the sample size N. Must be selective desire to be a 90% confident. That's a confidence level. That her estimate is within anything that comes after within. It's the uh, uh, margin of error E. And assume that sigma here, change this one to sigma. Assume that sigma is five. Well, there is a formula for N when you're working with the mean. And I will provide this formula. ZC, critical value divided uh, times sigma divided by E squared equal okay i know sigma is five margin of error is two all i need to find z uh c for 90 percent and actually if you memorize it guys for 90 percent it's 1.645 for 95 percent is 1.96 and for 99 is 2.575 and they're given at the bottom of the table but here's how you find it if you forget it you take 100% minus 90%, which is 10%, divided by two, which is 5%, and go to inverse norm and put 5%, zero, one. And you guys are gonna get 1.645. So just put it right here. And don't forget to square it right here. So it will be, 1.645 times 5 divided by 2, and then I'm going to square it. And you need to round up your answer, so it would be 17. Okay, and that uh, includes the review for uh, the test, test to study guide.